Hello, welcome to Nakti by Kali JNS. And today I want to talk to the ladies about a very uh, sensitive topic. And the topic of the hour is weave the subconscious effects of wearing another woman's genetic hair print on your head. So before we start, uh, it is crucial to contextualize the complex around the hair and um, we need to be in the mind frame of the admission that it is a complex uh, to wear hair that does not match your DNA code and put it on the head. So obviously I'm not talking about the concept of weave itself as being an inherent vice. Absolutely not. I'm saying that hair that doesn't match the hair texture of an uh, black woman's phenotype or an African phenotype, which is the 3A to 4 z hair type so obviously um weave textures that are in this range i'm not even talking about and uh, i'm not even talking to the ladies who who really are doing it as a protective style and their their hair is nice and flourishing and and, and doing well underneath some of those hair weaves this video is not made to divide uh, the girls that wear the weave is against the girls that do the natural hair thing is not uh, everything in this video is set with compassion for the black woman okay and there's gonna be no bashing it's a very sensitive topic and I'm not gonna tolerate any uh, comments you know that are that is bashing or any insensitivity within the comment section there is freedom of speech but we need to contextualize the the hair weave phenomenon before we uh, even break this down you know so everything's gonna be said with love and the goal is to assist and to really uh, encourage the black woman to embrace her natural beauty the way she came out of the womb and and this is a healing session so we want the black woman um, to understand why the the weave complex came into our culture as a collective consciousness here's how it go a lot of the black women's had yeah, this complex around your hair when your hair uh, as soon as you come out as a kid the hair is beautiful it's growing it's thick it's fluffy okay yeah it might be a uh, harder to comb unless you get the uh, coconut cream and put some little water in it and get a, make a nice conditioner for it with the mayonnaise but the hair is beautiful a lot of us had that long ass and some of us still do black women's hair it's complex but it grows and it's healthy and it's beautiful so around the age of five a lot of you had an ignorant ass mom or you know a hating ass mom and she puts the perm in your hair falls out it's never the same she put the perm in year after year after year damages the scalp causes burns causes alopecia then you get into the weave thing around 14 15 i got into weave around 14 15 you know and the the cycle of this weave phenomenon and i've i can at least name 15 women who you know were like childhood friends who also had the same type of uh you know scenario where hair was fine was thick as hell coarse as hell but it was fine and mom puts the perm in hair starts to fall out it's not growing like it should because obviously perms are chemicals shouldn't be on a child's head and uh the hair doesn't grow it's limp it's thin around 14 15 the mom lets her gets her first sewing then it's just a light takes a life of its own where she's constantly getting the sewing and then it morphs into the lace front weave weave around 18 19 and then, you know it's just this big old uh phenomenon in our community that many are uh don't don't like to admit okay uh, but we're gonna break it down in a very loving way we're gonna break it down uh, from the historical we're gonna go back to the 1800s so stay tuned because by the end of the video you're gonna get solutions and you're gonna get encouragement that I really do hope will help you know I really it, it, with the goal to see like okay you know this I, I can embrace my beauty and, and I see what she's saying, you know. And it's not against the backdrop of our male counterparts. This is for black women only, talking to the black woman, woman to woman, and from the perspective of let's lift each other up and not tear each other down. Okay? So we're going to review the complex of uh the context of how the complex started, right? 
Then we're going to talk about the subconscious message behind wearing another woman's genetic hair print, aka the hair weave. Then we're going to talk about the common talking points that the black woman gives for wearing the weave. And we're, we're going to do a refutation of them, ladies, because a lot of us have not been honest about the common talking points that we say. And I'm going to show you some proof that what you're saying does not match up with your talking points. And, and again, that's going to be with love as well. But it, I have to tell the truth. Then we're going to give a brief message about the black male counterparts and, and their obsession with the weave. That's going to be addressed very quickly. It's not a message to them. It's just it's just more context and then we're gonna do solutions to the complex as well as do a comparison of of how this how your natural hair looks in comparison to the, the weave and we're also going to give you some advice some styles on like the braiding the, the locks and then um, even natural hair weaves you know like the hair that actually look like that grow out your head we're going to look at some uh, 4c 3 3c you know all them type of different hair weaves and hair textures that are, are are just as good if you you know want to put the braids in uh, the real hair into a protective style and put add, add some ta some length to hair that actually looks like it grows out your head the hair that's already on top of your head a lot of us put some extension on it to give it some length and stuff so we're gonna go through all of that in this video uh, so just stick to the end and keep an open mind uh, let your defenses down somewhat you know and, and allow yourself to be vulnerable I'm gonna be vulnerable in this video because I oh definitely understand this weave thing probably more than a lot of the women because I've grew up around women and I me myself were weave I still wear weave I just wear weave that is my hair texture but I used to do the the, the weave that was not my genetic hair print as well so we're gonna get into all of that with no judgment and let's start so the context of this hair thing it started around the 1800s and again I'm gonna be talking about the black American woman so if you're Caribbean or African uh, the context obviously it will be a lot different for you as far as how the weave came into place of I, I think for the African woman uh, the influence came from obviously colonialism I do think there was um, like a uh, a band on natural hair in the schools in Africa so that's crazy but I think I did hear something about that and I hear that a lot of African women were influenced by the Western uh, style of the black American woman's head so we're gonna start with the black American woman and uh, you'll still be able to learn something if you don't have that context so you can still listen so we know when the black American woman was uh, not even a American when she we first got over here and we kept the, the, the those amazing hairstyles from Africa right so a lot of these uh, these eccentric these decorative tribal hairstyles uh, was pretty much what we would do uh, even when we got over here uh, we was able to keep all of those braiding styles, all of those twists, and all of those stretching methods. We did that, and the hair was actually quite long. And, and as you can see, you know these these pictures from the 1800s. Look at how these Black American women, when they first got over here, they were still doing their African hairstyles. So there's actually a law uh, passed called the Tinyan laws or Tinjin laws I just say Tinyan I don't know how to really pronounce this law the name of the law but it was a Tinyan law that was enacted uh, around this time you know and it's basically a law to say that the black woman must wear a plain head wrap on her head like usually like white uh, color head wrap and, and you know like a scarf not no decorative gay lay African head wrap nothing like that plain head wrap on their head to cover her hair because basically uh, white women were feeling like okay what's up with all of these direct these decorative hairstyles that uh, you know she cannot wear and it's causing distraction it's causing a lot it's getting it's it's too you know attention grabbing 
and then the afro is too attention grabbing so even if the ladies you know uh didn't know how to do the elaborate african hairstyles and braiding they were still having this big old froze on their head so it was like oh no 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 your asses are gonna put that head wrap on your head you're gonna put two braids in that shit you're gonna put a, a white fucking towel on that shit and cover it up and to quell the jealousy okay so and to and to not make it so attention grabbing and so you know like it, it basically was enacted by um men but there were groups of women who drafted that law it was it was a law drafted by white women to uh pass that law so here is the subconscious build up okay of the black woman covering up the hair and being ashamed of the hair because now it's like after a say you know a generation or two you lost the 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 ability to make the African hairstyle like all of like the tribal hairstyles West African hairstyles East African hairstyles Central Africa all of them different shits you were wearing and we have the pictures of you and you know of, of, of our ancestors in like these uh, Western clothing with these <laughs> African hairstyles on their head so this is a real thing so after the generations or two you don't know how to put that shit back in your head because you're forced to wear this white scarf on your head so that automatically sets the tone and that's the context that's needed to understand the how the complex started right so that's just number one right there the fact that you have to wear this and you got to figure the women who who the first generation who it happened to they understood oh our hairstyles are just too you know too elaborate too but you got to figure by that next generation and then by that third generation those girls those baby girls that was wearing that shit on their head since they was a kid really thought there was something wrong with their head that needed to be covered that it it needed to be covered so they were not tending to their real hair most likely they were it was just in two braids may get conditioned you know maybe washed when they're taking a shower you know going in a lake to take a bath or something but for the most part the hair thing uh just just was was riddled in oppression you know i won't say shame yet because at this part it's not so much shame but it was just more so rooted in oppression degradation that the women themselves grew to not even understand after i want to say maybe one generation right so that's the context that when that everybody misses when they, they want to come at you about the hair weave and then particularly we know black men don't ever bring this up when they want to bash you about the hair weave thing but that is the context that must be understood here's another context actual laws so once the tignan laws went away or whatever here you got the 1900s or whatever you know there's no more slavery or whatever but here is the discrimination laws in the workplace for the hair okay so context number two uh the, the 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 hair those afros and the puffs and the braids and the long braids with the beads on them that was not even allowed in no damn workplace in the 1900s throughout the whole 1900s all the way into the damn to, to the the 21st century the y2k so this that's the second context context that is very crucial because that's the, where the shame come in because here it is you know you're supposed to be a citizen of the country at this point and, and you you know you, you're supposedly free and you will not you cannot get the job you know whether it's working in someone's home whether it's working in you not necessarily in the corporate world at that time but a lot of secretary work a lot of factory work do not go they were not the black woman was not allowed to wear no huge ass afro up in that workplace or them elaborate braids with the beads on them with the twist with the long long dreads with they put the seashells on them and put it in the bun and all that shit and no perm so or sodium hydroxide because it wasn't called perm it was called lye at that time lye so get some lye and at this time this was before like you know the actual perm box the just for me box so a uh, black man they discovered that sodium hydroxide uh that it will that if you put it in your hair it'll make it straight there was a black man that came up with that for, for sure and they were putting the lie in there to get them little waves you know to get the waves and then the black woman uh started putting that in her hair as well and it will burn you know you got to put some oil put some crisco all around the edges and all on the scalp to make sure it don't burn the head 
and it was often burnt anyways but you gotta make sure you do it for 10-15 minutes and then get to the water and rinse it out or your shit is fucked up so that is also another context of the shaming of the hair so it's the, the assimilation aspect of uh, of your actual uh, well being as far as ability to take care of yourself rooted in the actual politics of your hair just your ability to get a job so when, it's, when it, it sounds so dramatic but it's like no you actually if you go to a work interview in America when you used to I don't it, it's gotten just a tad bit better but in America you go to work with afro puff on your fucking head you know big in the, in the early 1900s mid 1900s late 1900s you were not getting a job in america or or you you was a certain job but you you know a lot of us were doing the middle class thing, especially when on factory jobs opened up in the north you still had to go to an interview you know and, and a lot of a lot of black women did get those uh, factory jobs in the gm plants and the chevy plants and you know the kodak plant and shit and they did wear that perm on their head so that's the context and then even in obviously you know in corporate america you know the perm or the wig you know so that's i would say that is also another form of uh of, it's not so much the buck breaking term but it's woman breaking womanhood breaking so we don't ever talk about we always talk about the buck breaking of the black man but we don't talk about the womanhood breaking of the black woman and that is a very important thing that we miss obviously all of it's important but that is a that was the second straw in the womanhood breaking of the black woman because that you you got the subconscious uh, epigenetics around the tingen laws with the fucking head wrap and and now you got the subconscious epigenetics of i can't wear my hair in the workplace or it's going to be hard to get a job if i don't straighten it if i don't wear it straight boom so that's second context so all of that pushes the phenomena even more it, it dives the complex even ever so deep you know and it's so it's so sad you know but let's keep going and and we're gonna uh, get to better pastures so uh you know these laws it, it literally just became illegal to discriminate against uh hair uh like literally like three years ago you know um it, it, it's it's quite a shame we, we see plenty of videos on you can go look up stuff where girl black women have been suspended from school have been asked to go home have been asked to wrap it up again so there's always this uh, ravenous uh obsession with the black woman's hair the black woman herself but then there's this primal threat there to want to control how she looks and control her image as far as making sure no one pays attention to her mind you when everyone he want to copy off her so everybody's want to copy off her but you know you don't ever want to give that credit to her and then you have to systematically uh do these womanhood breaking tactics okay so all of this is battle of the wombs energy it is it's very deep we seen how these laws go we seen how these discrimination stuff was and a lot of that obviously is a, is a brainwash washing mechanism so here you got the brainwashing and then you see uh the promotion of this of hair you know in the magazines because black people started their own magazines jet ebony um they started uh, their own types of uh, apparatuses to uh, get their own entertainment and media out and the only thing that was being promoted is was the uh straight hair look the, the straight hair or the wig look you know it, so that just took its um a life of its own so as far as you now times may have changed or whatever but as far as the weave thing itself i would say those two contexts that i just named gave birth to the weave concept itself then the third context will also be standard of beauty media representation so that also is the third context in the breaking of uh black womanhood the the the, the, the womanhood breaking so just like buck breaking is the same concept it's just more sinister and it's it's covert and not well understood yeah, because the black woman hasn't understood it she she doesn't even admit that this hair stuff is a complex it is it truly is and um you know the black men always take glee and uh 
pretty much just bashing with no solutions and no context so unfortunately we've missed the boat on how to heal this thing but there's still time to uh, open the door to have the discussions amongst women and to start the healing process because understanding those three contexts uh, is the is the root for seeing how it developed so then the weave thing comes into play and the weave that is promoted is not the the three B three C four A four B four C hair type that just started too within the last ten years uh, not even ten uh, seven seven you know uh, but before that you couldn't find any hair weave that was those textures in large scale like you can now now you can just get a whole damn dreadlock weave on we go on that look nappy as hell you know you can get four C hair now extensions you know you cannot get that in the 90s and the 80s and the 70s that's just a fact now we had a moment in the 70s uh black power movement like late 60s 70s where the black woman was wearing the afro but it was as a political statement so it wasn't the stream of collective consciousness of embracing the beauty it was more so of defiance so that's why the movement didn't last because for one it was only uh it was uh, most black people was brainwashed at that time the, the black panthers was a very small group um the the black power movement uh, it's like i think they estimated our government was estimated as about 250,000 black people that actually participated who considered themselves to be activists and uh people who wanted change so it was all them, the rest of them niggas didn't care so it was, it was tons of black women still wearing their perms and shit. That's why it didn't last. That's why you see the natural hair movement now that started in what, 2007, I want to say, 2008? I'm not sure. I cut my hair bald like a baby's ass uh, in 2010. So I'm not sure when it started. But uh, this one, as you can see, it, it, lasted, it lasted a lot longer. It spread a lot faster amongst black American women because it was from the context of embracing your hair and getting rid of the chemicals that harm you out your head and letting that hair grow but even that had many problematic elements to it eventually when the girls that had the 4c hair thought that they was going to have the, the hair that looked like the 3a 3b 3c and cut they shit off and only to find that it would never no amount of chemical or uh gel kinky gel and camille butter and all that stuff We'll get they shit looking like the other girl texture other black women's texture so that even caused confusion and and a riff there within uh within the natural hair community but back to the 60s that's why that didn't last because it was completely different context it was not ba it, they said it was based on on the beauty but that it, it was sort of that but again from my research it was more so of political statement they were all black with the beret on the head with the natural hair underneath you know but well, i mean with the afro underneath and it was only the afro if you notice there wasn't twist and you know so that movement was completely different so right after that movement got squashed and the crack era uh hell happened and the bet and 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 cedar's world and all this promotion of weave 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 in the, in the music videos then black king magazine comes out and uh, all these other magazines comes out and all they put on there weave 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 okay so the weave 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 thing uh takes place and the obsession with the weave an obsession with the perm which that perm stuff started uh, way before the weave stuff so it morphed from the perm and to the weave because once that perm shit happened with the with the black women putting that perms in their baby's hair and the shit was falling out and the shit was so thin by the time high school come then that that's why at round 15 a lot of us put the weave in the head and then from there it was just weave 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 so that now that you understand the context of uh, uh the, the the three contexts that i gave you and, and gave you a little bit of backdrop now we're gonna get into the subconscious effects of what it says and this is where it gets sensitive and this is where the arguments gonna come and you're gonna swear up and down and you just doing it because you like to switch it up and you just doing it for protective style here's where we get into the fuzzy fuzzy um but again have an open mind and 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 study the co the collective unconscious like your uh actual actions are only uh five percent logical so everything is 95 percent of your actions are stems from 
the subconscious mind your long-term memory that is usually a uh, repressed trauma uh, emotions it, it contains uh, things you are unconscious of many of the content that you watch and observe goes into the subconscious mind and and it builds up whatever you tune into you become so whatever is in your subconscious mind you eventually let out in your conscious but you're still only doing five percent logical so as far think of that when we talk about this we thing and how it may not be conscious like you may not be aware of it but it's a possibility that it's coming out from the subconscious mind so let's get into it so what does it say subconsciously to wear hair or to perm hair to wear weave that clearly does not look like your genetic hair print what did it what does it say you know you know we're talking about the 26 inch all uh, oh hair that's blonde and you know straight or that's jet black straight that look like the asian woman's head it'll be the mongolian a brazilian and the peruvian you know all these things i done seen it all on the internet so you can't lie and say that that's not true the mongolian bundles at seven hundred dollars a bundle and the, the peruvian and the malaysian i even saw malaysian <laughs> <laughs> you know uh 800 bucks and shit for some hair that don't look like nothing that come out your damn head so what does that say subconsciously for the straight the straight brazilian or the, the body wave the the straight 30 inch 22 inches that you put on that head and and, and then uh cut that lace off and get that uh that that got to be glue and gel that glue on or or the real real powerful glue had that shit on for a week or two with the lace front or you braid your shit up and around in a circle braid it up and put that bobby pin on it and then get the hair track and glue it on or if you don't glue it on you sew it on with a needle what does that say subconsciously do that time at the time to the point where you know for wearing weave it's a stereotype that you wear weave you get bashed for wearing weave it's a eight billion dollar a year industry of weave spending in america and you know this is a big thing here so you see where i'm going with it what is it saying subconsciously what is the message okay so i say that that message says that i am not free i say that that phenomena everything that i just made just you know just now that i mentioned that says that i am conquered it says that i am uncomfortable with my state of being so i go like i scramble up my seven hundred dollars, my and my three fifty, one fifty. Them sewing's expensive. I go get the fusion. I go get uh, the clip, whatever the fuck it is, and I pay top dollar for that shit. It don't look like nothing that I, how I looked when I came out the womb, and that's what I do. And you know, boom. It says that I don't think the way God made me is enough. Or here's the last one. That it says I am pressured. I am pressured to live up to a standard and I don't fit in with society unless I do it. So that's another big one too. Again, it's subconscious. It ain't something you really thinking when you putting that shit on your head. You're not, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm pressured. Let me go get the weave. Oh, I'm, I'm not free. Let me go get it. Get that weave. It's the message behind the actions that it, you know, so it's the subconscious science. Okay. So. The wearing of another woman's genetic hair print on your head sends reverberations throughout the universe and our ancestors and our gods communicating low self-esteem and dis-ease within oneself. No matter what excuse you give to the universe. But you could say, oh, I'm just doing it. I like to switch it up. I, I don't like wearing the same hair. I want blue hair. I want to I want to wear a short bob. I want a straight bob. I want to wear, uh, then I want to do this bun on my head with the straight hair coming down. You could say you just want to switch it up. The universe know that's not the case. It knows, for one, about all three contexts, right, that I just gave. It knows, for one, about the imagery the, all, the standard of beauty, all this stuff. It, it knows the pain that is riddled in. It knows the pain. So, 
you're sending these reverberations not only to the universe but to your children and then to the male counterpart and it's it's you it, it's just something that they have learned to live with but they are very much aware they're very much aware so it perpetuates an acquiescence you know whether we want to say that or not again i'm not talking about the weaves that match your damn hair you know if you got the 4c hair you get the 4c hair clips I, come on like why would i be talking about that or you put your hair in uh 10 braids going to the back and you got 4c hair and you say let me go I, you know my hair my i just did the tiny chop or whatever the tiny what's it called the big chop <laughs> the tiny chop the big chop and I got, I got this growing and put some braids in this shit and go give me a 4c wig and call it a fucking day i'm not talking about that ladies and i'm not talking about 3b 3c 4a whatever 4b they got the they got the 4b wig now now i used to love that shit and my, my hair is 3c and I, I wear that shit i'll i'll go get that big and you know afro looking one put it on you know and wear that bad boy the real big curls and stuff so ladies you know what i'm talking about don't be obtuse don't say well i just you know what about braids you know good and hell well i'm not talking about braids you know braids is always been an african thing that has always been your nature from thousands and thousands and thousands of years to put some braids in your damn head or to lock it up that's just common sense so i'm not talking about uh, no weave braids you guys know exactly what i'm talking about i'm going to show pictures i'm going to show some more evidence so when we're wearing that hair that's not our genetic blueprint it does say these things subconsciously whether you want to admit it or not that doesn't mean that you're you know don't don't get defensive when i say that when i say you oh i'm not i'm conquered or i'm not free remember there was the womanhood breaking tactics just like the buck breaking the womanhood breaking i just named three of them so obviously you have context to understand this complex and if you had done 400 years as a fucking slave in a country or 350 years whatever and then you have laws in place to cover your shit does it is that not does it make sense to doesn't it make wouldn't it be the logical thing to say obviously you've been brainwashed to on a subconscious level to think that you're not free seriously so that's what it's saying to the universe and and, and it abandons the black woman's soul blueprint when you put that blonde head on it that, that that hair you know that ridiculous hair that doesn't match your blueprint the weave in itself is not the issue it's the how you feel about your hair are you taking care of your beautiful locks you know are you ashamed to wear them beautiful locks out or if you do wear the protective styles like you said is your shit taken care of? You got edges. You got the kitchen looking right. It's greased up underneath that scalp. You got the berries and the juices up in there. You do the protein treatment. You do whatever treatments that you got. You got the cedar wood essential oils up in your shit. Lemon essential oil. A little bit of mint to stimulate the scalp. To get it growing. Get it a little cayenne to uh, increase the blood flow. You know, all the things that black people do that in Africa. And how we did over uh, before we got so brainwashed. You know, to the hair to keep, take care of black hair. Black hair can be taken care of very easily, uh, regardless of the texture. That's just a fact. You know, you might not have no elaborate uh, hairstyle. You know, no, no Kim Kardashian looking wig on or something. But you know, that that hair is sufficient. It, that God definitely loves that hair. That hair is the is the hair you've been born with. Okay. So now that you know the factors that cause you to wear that 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 weave. You know, we're going to talk about the common talking points of denial. So, ladies, buckle your seat belt, okay? And we're going to talk about why the denial. So, here's what you ladies tell me. This is what you ladies tell each other. This is what you ladies tell your kids and the black man or the white man, whoever you're dating. This is what you tell them as far as your reasons when they ask you why you wear all that we you know i want to see the real hair you know what's up with the wig thing you know you got tons of wigs you got a closet 
people that attend 20 wigs, you done named them, you call it a unit, or you call it her. You got one named Sheba, you got one named Rima, you got one named Castillo, you got one named uh, Lima. You got all these wigs up in this closet, ladies, and the men, they want to know what's going on when they're dating, regardless of the color. You know, black men just take it too far with their bashing, but all the men, even if they're curious, they're curious, even if they just say, why you what's up with that you know what you with the wear how, how your real hair look you know um and again we have the context we know that many uh people are jealous and threatened when we do style up and get the fuck up and, and you know and, and do our shit looking real good a lot of the reasons why these things have been acted is as clearly because of jealousy but um we're gonna get into that a little bit later so here's what you said you said we just want to switch it up we just like different styles. We like trying new things. And then another one that you said is, this was a recent one. Now this one is in pretty. This one is pretty genius. But man, I still call it out. But this one was a new one. This is the one that came from the African girls, and they say, and the black women start saying it too. We can give birth to any hair texture because we had the mitochondria DNA that gave birth to the human race so we can have any hair texture okay so you said that one and the last one that you said which is very popular among America is that it's a protective style <laughs> so these are the things that I'm that I've seen throughout the years that I've studied you know we just want to switch it up we can birth any hair texture because we have the Eve gene, and then it's a protective style. So okay, so you know, we see this uh, the stream of consciousness you gave us. Now, something not adding up, ladies, because I see the evidence, and, and, and this evidence says something deeper going on. Because we can see the damage that these weaves have caused to the edges and the scalp. So it's way deeper than switching it up, than a, than a protective style or maintenance. And everyone knows this, especially black men and our children. He's always around us the most. Everyone knows this, but, uh, but the black woman, she denies it. And she's she creates this false uh, alternative reality, uh, quite frankly. And... and um, uh, we're gonna get into why I say that so let's look at these pictures ladies beautiful ladies I will have evidence to back up why all three of those common talking points of why you wear and weave does not add up so as we can see look at these photos ladies showing the damage look at this baby girl right here beautiful girl beautiful showstopper bald whatever now she went viral because she was one of the baby girls that wore the wig 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 even when it was dead i mean her shit was bleeding it was pop core causing uh, bar, bar, uh it was <laughs> it was causing holes in her head from this shit bleeding with pus and green pus and stuff and she said she still wore the shit to the point where it just got so bad she just said okay this is ridiculous it was stinking and it was she said fuck it i just gotta really take this shit out so she stopped doing it but a lot of you are allergic to this fucking uh weaves and this uh canicolon and this stuff that the uh, tenicolon and uh uh those wigs and that lace that they use and up under it that lace they're allergic to it and that glue now that is a big one you're allergic to that stuff and that's what's causing that those reactions like that with the with the bleeding scalp now look at this one Look at that. She has the best, clearly a perm. You can see some of the weave up there. But look at those edges just gone. Because of the that, that constant tension, that constant weave. And another thing is uh, that there's more chemicals. So it could have been that perm that did that. Or the allergic reaction to that tracks itself and that glue itself. I'm telling you. Look at this one. Look at that. Damaged. So how is how do you make sense saying that it's a protective style when your shit look crazy underneath it? How is it a protective style? How is it you just want to switch it up when it is bald on the sides? Now these ladies are beautiful. Look at her. Look at her earrings and and, and uh, 
you know, her she, she has a beautiful uh, jawline. And look at the damage. Look at the damage. Now, you keep, don't say, oh, how you know it came from weed. That's clearly a perm. That's clearly not how a black person's hair look. Uh, that's clearly from years of wearing lace front and wigs. Like, let's not get stupid here. Look at this one. So, look at more damage. That's another perm. I know what a perm looks like, ladies. That is a perm. More weave. Once again, another beautiful sister. And not understanding that the common talking points, or that the, she's not understanding the context of the complex, or how this phenomenon gets to be, and how this damaging this stuff is. Because these black women were brainwashed as baby girls. Then mama fucked up putting these perms in their head and putting these weaves in their head and they and, and sabotaging their hair potential so when they get grown now it's looking like this and instead of being truthful the black woman collectively have decided to to give these talking points of protective style look at this now you now you could see covering of the of, of of the hair with the weave you can see the tracks on there completely bald around the edges completely bald and that's a perm as well so in one picture you see there's a weave that's being installed on the head and in the other picture you see the perm of the damage so where is this protective style black woman where is this just wanting to switch it up black woman where is this you give birth to any hair genetic when your shit is looking like this now again these ladies are not going to be shamed because these ladies are beautiful and these ladies have been brainwashed and these ladies also if they not brainwash they don't they don't internalize that complex so much from those three contexts that i mentioned that they're mutilating themselves and degrading themselves unknowingly and and then be creating an alternative reality and just saying that it's it's a protective style and it, it's this other stuff and this is what the black man is seeing every day this is what he's waking up to uh this is what he's seeing across all of america and across all of africa and this is why you know they they're trying to shame you into not wearing it without giving you any context and any compassion so they're wrong to try to use a shaming tactic to correct behavior because that does not work it actually creates more shame so their method is stupid as hell and that's why you're defiant towards them and say nigga you don't build anything so you don't even have a right to speak on our hair and you don't have a right because you you you're not have done anything to provide a protector there so then that's just usually the comeback that we give or we say uh why are you always obsessed with all uh, what women are doing why you always obsessed with so this is what they're seeing that the children are seeing these things the, the baby girls are seeing these things look at this she's getting she's getting an installation of 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 weave it, straight weave and as you can see it's bald all on the top bald all around the edges and they're there she they don't damn concocted some damn uh fake braids on there so she can get the weave and start once again beautiful beautiful and she she, I bet you her shit look way. Imagine, you know, with an afro, something that look decent, it, or to put a true protective style on there, because they do have. When you go bald and get alopecia and all these things, and cancer and all these things, they have uh, weaves made for restoration, for actual hair growth. They cost a lot. It's called prosthetic. That prosthetic wig that the doctors can make for your head. And so if the, if the ladies were saying protect the style like that and they got a situation like this and they know they want to have their hair recovered because it's so damaged and they get a prosthetic one, that's obviously different. So let's keep going. More damage, another perm, probably had this shit in her head since she was like, what, three, three, four years old, two years old. Now we see the ramifications of it. No edges and bought on the sides. Look at an, a famous model who is one of the most gorgeous models to ever grace the planet. We see 
No edges. Bald. From the weaves. You know that's weaves that did that to her head. Beautiful woman. Look at that baby girl. From tight, 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 tight. Perm. That looked like a perm. She's going bald. Baby girl. With a little barrette on her hair. She don't need that tight like that. You see how tight it is? How it's pulling like that? It don't need to be that damn tight. She's a baby. See that? And you see she got her hair braided up in that circle. Preparing for what? A weave. So if I'm lying, don't just say, oh, that's just, you know, you know, you know, that's just an alopecia. That's just, a, that you don't know, that ain't no, about no weave. That's the hairstyle you get to get them damn braids in. Because I did that hairstyle to my head when I, I started doing sew-ins at 15. So I know. And that's that style that you use to get that sew in. Because I've done it plenty of times. In my own damn head. I wouldn't no ball no mill like that. But you know. So she done did it so much. That it, it intentioned. It done tore. And she probably got allergic reaction to the tracks itself. Tell you them tracks. You don't know what hot was made in them damn tracks. Them tracks is made with a damn chemical. Ladies. So obviously that can cause an allergic reaction here's another one bleeding in the middle of the head sores ball she's at the doctor's probably getting a hair transplant another one beautiful ladies look at her she's you can see on the, from the side of her face that she's a beautiful woman you can see that clear as day and once again the phenomenon of the damaged hair. She just cut all her shit off and said she's going to start over. But look at the perm. The perm has burnt her scalp. The perm. Uh, you know, all of this damage to these ladies who got it going on. And like all the black women do. So this this hurt in my heart. As I'm flipping through this and you hear my voice getting raised. It's, it's making me mad. Not at these ladies, obviously. But it's making me mad about our this whole complex. The whole phenomenon. How it came into place. The context that I was talking about. It's making me upset. That ladies who, who are otherwise beautiful. Clear as day. Who otherwise can have this, their, their hair growing. That it got messed up since a child. And we see the effects of it. So obviously that, that makes that hurts my heart to see that my sister's going through something like that. And I actually have family members. I got family members that went through this stuff. That, that look just like that. Like I'm 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 saying this from a part of 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 hurt be also because I have family members that's bought just like this now. With the with, with the damage done. Okay. She look another sister. Another sister. She's an older sister. So you all those years of damage. Look at this one. This is the mold. So it it done got so bad, man. It didn't go to got a mold growing on it now. And and she gotta cut it out. And and look how that looks. It stinks and, and it's green. It's a mold. It's a fungus growing on it. Okay, and look at this one. Here's another fungus. Here's a red tracks on her head that looks nothing like. Now look, look, now look at them red tracks that on the she they don't damn scalped it out, don't, don't, don't scoped it out, and compare it to what we see on her head. It looks nothing the same. And in fact, it done got so bad that it done morphed together, fused together. And as she's taking it out, what do you see? mold on her hair and, and um like furry stuff looking like it looks like fur it's mold fur so here we see ladies that those common talking points and, and i had more but you know i don't want to you know be going on and on and on about with this particular uh section you know it's, it's hurtful it's painful and I, and I don't you know we get it you know you, you've seen enough but i found hundreds of this shit i found it so them talking points ladies and again this is a healing session because it's like Okay, you see it, you know, we, we're healing. And we will see the evidence of it. So these ladies are not being shamed. Not at all. Because as we saw their faces, we could see their profile and their beauty. And we could see, and we already told you the context. So now you see how much of a demon or entity this has morphed into. And 
All I'm saying is the talking points of denial can no longer be applied here, ladies. Okay? So all those ladies, I, I say they need to just go bald. Cut it all off and start over. And I know you say, well, that's alopecia. No, it's not. And I, I, got, a, I got a story to tell you about that. Okay? So let me tell you. Again, I told you I had family members that deal with this shit, right? Someone who I actually lived with. So the back of her... Now, you know how the ladies had it on the side? I know someone that had the, the back of the head completely. The whole back. The whole back. Bought like a baby's butt. Like, there was not even a strand growing back there. Now, the whole top part, still there. Right? Because here's... And I'm going to tell you why it happened that way. Whole top part of the head, still there. Back, bought like a baby's butt. Now, why is that? Cut because for the last uh 20 years let's see 15 years for the last 15 years she took that that weave glue that you get for a dollar at the damn corner store and you guys know what i'm talking about i stopped wearing that shit oh I, st- I think i think i stopped that when i was 16 oh that shit is so bad so she took that um that that glue that cost one dollar for 15 years she's still doing it to this day as we speak and glue put the track in there you know part the part the hair put one this now 15 years ago she had, it was hair back there right because i knew this person for my whole life okay so there was hair back there so she take it put the glue on there put the track down lay the next part down put the track in da, 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 da. guess what she's allergic to it straight up allergic to it so at first it start turn red it get itchy so she put the itch cream on it the hydro the uh the the, the, the cortisol something like that some type of itch cream See how deep it is? So she's clearly allergic to this shit. So we try and tell her, you know, her whole neck be broken out. But she put, kept putting it on there. Kept putting Because I don't know what kind of style she she, she she thinks she needs that style on her head to look pretty. And she did. The, the style looked look, look really, really pretty. It still looks pretty. But when, when we were younger, I mean, it was a real, you know, they put the little tracks in the back to give it a little length. To get an extra length. And then put it, you know, to make it look real. Right? So after the years went past, it started getting thinner, starts falling out, starts red. Eventually, the body stops developing antihistamine to it, stops having developing antihistamine. So it was no longer itching. So this is how it, it, the body just got so used to this shit where it was like, where I'm not going to itch anymore, but I'm not going to grow either. So the shit just stopped growing. It, I mean, it fell all out. Like a baby, bald like a baby's ass, and there's just nothing back there, right? So nothing's back there now anymore. So we thinking, okay, okay, nothing's back there. Are you still gonna keep putting that glue in? Like you know, over the years we just begging her. You know, you might not want to put that glue in because that glue is what's fucking it up. And guess what she says? She put it. She keeps putting it on there. She didn't give a fuck. Like it's bald, and she's still putting the glue back on there because it's all her hair is in the front. It's fine. It's it's fine. And she, that's perm, but it, it didn't fall out, you know? And you're like, damn. You know, so I, I wanted to test the theory, right? So I said, you know what? I know, you know, there's some things going on, you know? Because then we talked about it. Uh, is this someone that was, uh, you know, if I grew up with them, I'm clearly related to them, right? So and she says, I want to get some sister locks. She says, I'm tired of the weave shit. I'm tired of this perm shit. I, I just want to do some sister locks. You know, I want to do like dreads. You know that that she's like, she looks so beautiful in dreads. She's like, I just want to do something, you know, something different and I, it's something I, you know natural. But here's the thing: everything was bald in the back, bald in like if, if she was to try to do a natural, she would have to cut everything off bald, right? She wasn't really was not willing to do that. So I said, well, how about we get a prosthetic wig? We get a prosthetic wig. You. You, you leave your hair in the front. You don't want to cut your hair off in the front, whatever, whatever. But we start to slowly cut the perm out. And you wear the prosthetic wig so that no glue's on going on the back of the head anymore. And that way it'll grow back, right? So she said, okay. She said, well, what do we need even pro- Because prosthetics, you know, they're expensive. So she's like, well, why don't we spend money on that when we could just... I mean, this was a, a $3,000 wig. So we're going to get a prosthetic wig, shit. Let's just see. Let's just try it with a regular wig. You know, just try it with some... With a fucking, you know, human hair wig, you know? So we do that. Guess what? The shit that hurt, the, that bald stuff started to grow back. Because there was no more glue. Like, the, 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 she stopped the glue. And it was like growing back. We were like, you know, we were amazed. Her son, 
because her son always he never talk he knows you know how son, kids never come at their mom you know sons always they don't but they feel hurt they feel pain but they're not able to articulate why but um you know he was so 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 happy that it was growing back because he's like yes so we thought we had hope so we thought right so we saw growing back and i guess that she got impatient you know i don't know what happened but next thing you know I just woke up one morning and it was fucking blue with them tracks back in. And I said, what happened? What did you do? It's growing back. So I guess, I don't know, in her mind, again, it's the alternate reality type stuff. In her mind, she figured, it don't grow back. It's growing back. So I guess I put the glue back on. She, she, she was so in denial that she was allergic to it and so in denial that that was the cause of why her, her hair was completely bald in the back. So she put it back in there. So I remember her son looking kind of like, what the fuck did she do that for? You know, this, this is somebody that I'm helping raising, right? So we're looking like, why did you just do that? Okay. So we understand it was so deep for her. So she, and, and she never did get those sister locks. Like to this day, guess what? The tracks and that glue, the dollar glue. I think it's a dollar fifty now. And that glue... And I was still going back there, and I was still bald. And I'm so, so, so um, hurtful. But that's when I knew it was something deeper. That's when I said, oh, it's something deeper with this weave shit, man. This lady's not telling the truth. And here's the thing. There was this thing called, like, some... It's like a MSM-based product that's made for horses. That, that when horses lose their hair, you could put this... Uh, this oil on the head it's it stank it smelled just like sulfur because it's msm so you can put it on the horse and the horse hair grow back fast as hell right so the white girls started putting it on their hair to grow their shit thick and fast yes it worked i don't know how the secret got into the black community but the, but uh women started putting that shit in their hair so much that the company made one for humans like you can go and buy one for humans now but according to the girls they say the, the one that's made for the horses still work better because there's more sulfur in it so i bought some of that i bought some of that for my hair because i that's when I, I had went natural and i'm gonna give you my story of my natural stuff too so i had went natural but i said i want my shit you know i want my shit big like you know a big old afro so i said let me get some of this um this horse shit or whatever and uh the quiet as a kept a lot of the natural hair girls are using that by the way that they don't go on youtube broadcasting that but when you see this girl these these big ass they are using that when they first start off the, the tiny chop the, the teeny weeny afro and then boom in a year or two the shit is 16 inches and all that they we know what we was using we was using all types of stuff taking biotin every day like me and then uh doing the uh and my son so i bought some of that and the baby that i'm helping raising you know he sees it he's watching me in the morning part my shit up and put that on here mind you he he's seeing the juxtaposition between him and his mom but i always tell him you know you don't judge your mom I, 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 what i told y'all about the context about the weave thing i taught him that at three because he asked he kept asking about like why the fuck did these you know you know he ain't say why the fuck but he you know around three four years old he's looking like why y'all putting that on your head because at that time i was actually still wearing weave so when he was seeing his mom's you know doing that you know he started asking so i had just cut my shit off and just went natural or whatever but i remember him like looking like you know like picking it up you know going across the floor and playing with it and and I understand, you know, he was trying to understand it. So when I went natural, he, you know, he's still not understanding why his mom's not going natural. Why his mom's not doing it either. Because, I mean, I cut my shit off. So he's like, well, you know, you do it too. So I had to explain to him, don't be judgmental. And, 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 and don't, you know, try to understand what's going on here. And... And have some compassion because he knew it was a complex. Like these, he was a kid at this time. When he's about, I want to say six, seven, maybe it's six, seven at this time. So at that, that time, he knew it was something going on there. It was just the cuts out of the bag. Like most black boys, they know this. Most black baby girls, they know this. It, it, black women is the only one for whatever who created alternative reality because it's a, a trauma, it's a PTSD, it's a mental fragmentation at this point. So the black woman's mind is literally fragmented around her hair, literally. And there's no healing around it. So that's why I'm making this video so we can get the healing process started. It's a fragmentation where you telling the whole world you're doing one, two, A, B, and C. And then the whole world is literally seeing something else. 
even if they're not saying it. And a lot of black men, believe it or not, yeah, they've got a segment of them that bash, bash, bash. But a lot of them have been pretty, um, they, they pretty much live with it. They just said it is what it is. And then you got to figure, you, you see a mom doing it, so it's like, your mom, your mom do it, so whatever. So, anyways, back to the story with the MSM. He sees me putting this MSM shit on my head. And then, like, within two weeks, it's like the shit's growing like two inches in two weeks and stuff. So I said, so I, I, I go to him, I said, look at the difference between the hairline from this week and last week. So I show him the bottle, right? I'm like, dude, this right here, it made my hair grow. Before I can even finish, the, the little kid snatches the shit out my hand. He snatched that shit out my hand and ran in his mom's room with the bottle. He goes in, his, in the room and he says to her, mom, this is what's going to grow your hair back in the back. This is what's going to get your hair back from being bald. This. And mind you, she in there, you know, at this time her hair is not done. So you can actually see some of the baldness. And, you know, just the shame. I wanted to just rip his little head off because I knew that he was about to get out. I said, why the fuck did he do that? But it was innocent. This is a baby. Like six, I mean, come on, six years old, seven years old. That's a baby still. He had no content. You know, he, he. He wasn't trying to be rude. He wasn't trying to be. He, he said it would excite me. He had a smile on his face because he saw my shit. You know, he looked and he said, who did what happened? And when I showed him and, I, and then I was, you know, talking, I said, yeah, this stuff make your hair grow so bad. Look at this. And boom, he snatched it out my hand. This is going to be so good for you, mom. This is going to be so good. Put it on your hair, mom. And she looked at him. It looks to kill. It looked like she going to slap him across the room. And she said, shut up. And took the bottle away from him, and you know he knew he had he you know he had hit a nerve like something had happened like he's like what did I do what did I do because he didn't understand he didn't understand and I, I'm not gonna lie I was laughing a little bit because I, the way he ran the way he just snatched it out my hand and ran and scream screaming it at the top of his little lungs this is what's gonna help you grow your hair you know <laughs> not knowing that it's a deeper it's you know he knew it's a complex but he thinking like here's a solution you know that's all he was thinking like. I, got, I found the solution for my mom, for her hair, right? That's that's what his mind thought. In her mind is like, you stay in a child's place, you get the, you mind your motherfucking business, you know, you know, you know how black women do. So he got a little bit in trouble, you know. She ain't whooping nothing, but you know he got trouble, and you know he brought me back my bottle of MSM. And anybody had to tell his ass to go snatch it out my hand. <laughs> <laughs> and you know I did tell I did you know I said well you know you know you know take it easy on him because he, he really just thought he was coming up with a solution she said I, I know but you know come on now you know so you know she's sensitive so I said well if you do want it I can I could definitely give you some you know so I did I put some in a bottle for her and it was working you know she, she used it it was working but once again the glue allergic to the glue boom it, you know it doesn't it doesn't matter and then you know if you don't want to stick to the prosthetic of uh, you know the, the the wig i said let's put the wig on and you know put this msm on your head and it's going to grow and you're going to get the sister locks still couldn't go with that because it was at this point um, again it's a fragmentation it's a mental frag it's a brain fragment basically when trauma happens and your brain can't handle it it fragments into a whole nother personality. It fragments into a whole nother alternative reality. So I'm telling you what happened to black women in their hair. They have trauma around their hair and it done fragmented their brain and now they they literally cannot rationally understand or you know what's going on. And then when you try to tell them they get defensive, they think you that's that's hate speech, huh? The fuck? All I'm trying to do is Get you to see what? Like, you know, that you, it then they, they, either that or they come with the talking points of denial. We're just switching it up. This is protective style. When I'm showing you the pictures of all these ladies with these bald spots and stuff. Okay, so it is deeper. And it is trauma. And there is mental fragmentation going on. Because I, I don't witness this with multiple women in my life. I'm telling you. I've seen women be allergic to these perms. Still put that shit on their head with the scalp bleeding. I've seen it with my own eyes. So now let's talk about my hair journey. I had the typical long, long black girl hair, you know, the three C black girl hair. When you wet it, it look good. Then the shit poof up into a damn big ass uh, ball poof if you don't comb it out and detangle it, right? And 
very 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 long hair like all my black friends we all do very very long hair they, they and i didn't have no perms so guess what Didn't nobody put no perm in my hair nobody wanted to put a perm in my hair because they said my hair was all uh, but it unfortunately they use uh, a, a term i don't really like and don't use anymore good grade of hair so they said you don't need no perms you had a good grade of hair i don't like that shit but that's what i was told my whole life so i never got a perm guess what though 14 years old all of my friends had the perm and i did have a self-hatred of my hair because even though again it's the same thing with you know i i didn't see like beautiful curls you know i didn't see that i just i don't know what i was thinking so come uh 14 years old i'm in eighth grade i see all of the ladies the, the ladies got their perms there's only i went to a school that was like like um, I don't say it was diverse, but it was it was majority. I don't know. It was just wasn't that many black people in my class. There were black people there, but in, in our particular class, we were like in an advanced class or whatever. So I think it was like maybe six black women, six of us. I'm not sure. Six, maybe five of us. But all of these ladies, their mom had put their permanent hair when they was kids. Now some of them had the the four C, the three C, the three A, whatever. They had all the different textures, but they grew up. And they moms had been putting that perm in their hair. So I was literally the only one in my class by that time besides another girl who was my best friend who didn't have a perm in their hair, right? I go to the girls. It's not that many of us, mind you. I go and I say, I'm thinking about putting a perm in my hair, ladies. When I say they they gave me this look, they looked like they was about to slap the shit out of me. They said, don't do it. From the light skin to the dark skin to the brown skin, all they asked is said, don't do it. And they were being good friends, you know. If they were trying to be malicious, they just said, "Perm that shit." They said, "Don't do it." You regret. I mean, when I say my shit was long. It was long. Like they was just looking, at, and I'll never forget my the, my one friend Janae. She was real light skin with green eyes. She had a perm in her shit, and, her, and you could tell she would have been one of them people that had hair down her fucking back. And her mom didn't put her, that girl had perm for years, and she said, "You're gonna regret it. You're gonna regret it." She's like, "I might." She was like, dude, do not do that shit. Do not do that. Like, she, she's like, it burns. My hair is still struggling to grow. My hair still won't grow past a certain Like, Don't do it. Then I talked to my other friend. And she says, she had a perm her whole life. Her, her mom had put that shit in her head when she was like three, four years old. She was like, don't do it. And her hair wasn't growing past a certain length either. Like shorter than shoulder length. And she was saying, don't do that shit. She was a beautiful girl too. She was like, don't do it. Then I talked to another friend. Very beautiful girl. Like all these girls I like, got natural hair now. For the most part. I don't know uh, how Janae's hair. I haven't talked to her in years. But all these girls got locks and shit now. They didn't cut their shit off and, and start it over. Or they wear afros. And, um, and then I talked to another girl. Other, another friend named Paige. Now she had a permit. Her hair was long. But it was still thin looking. It still looked. You know it didn't look good. And she said too. Don't do it don't do it then talk to Chanel. don't do it then don't do it like when i said they like they was just looking like this bitch about to ruin her fucking hair guess what i went and did it and when i came in they just was looking like because guess what i burnt my shit because i was doing it myself and get my family i had to hide i had to sneak i had to because they wouldn't put it in my hair anyway so i had to buy the shit i, I had bought the olive one y'all know the olive oil perm I think it's called O R S. I bought that shit. Sure did. And uh put that in my hair. Then I bought motions, you know, because the first one didn't take. Right? So uh I had to, I went and got motions. Remember that one? And when I say my shit looked fucked up, I had I had to cut it. Because it was so I, I don't know, I wasn't I didn't know what I was doing. So I left it in too long. Something happened, but it just didn't look good. It was it was just fucked up. So it was straight. I had got that straight look. Able to put, you know, pretty much just put a little cream. In it, you know, and I was able to do that before. Like I could not believe that I actually was able to do that before. It just took a little bit more work with like that. You know, maybe put an edge control on it. But I didn't know edge control existed when I was fourteen. Because now my hair is natural and all I need is edge control and gel. If I want that slick, slick, slick shit, you know. But I don't really be concerned with that. But if I wanted to, just get an edge control and gel. So I could have did that back then, but I didn't know. So I just wanted to just be able to put a damn uh, cream or, you know, some pink lotion on my shit. And just have it looking real straight and just keep it moving. Put a ponytail in it. 
So I got what I wanted. You got what you wanted, but you lost what you had. Because when I say my shit was never the same after that, until I had... Woo, when I say I suffered, like I went to school and they just looked like this dumb bitch. That's how they was looking at me like, we told your stupid ass not to perm your shit. And it, was, it didn't look good. It didn't. It did not grow. It did not. And I had to cut it. I, then I actually went to a, a beauty parlor. She called, she said, what the fuck happened to your hat? You know how she, you know, she ain't saying it, but that's how she looking. She's like, we gonna have to cut a lot of this off. She said, I'll try to save as much as I can, but we gotta cut this off. And I said, just cut it. I said, cut as much as you did it off and, you know. But she didn't say, she just was curious, like, what did you do? You know? But she didn't put me on blast and say, oh, I think she permed her shit. <laughs> Excuse me. So no one had knew that I perked my shit. They just, because again, I was always told, oh, you got a good gray hair. Got a good. So it didn't really, you know, they, 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 nobody noticed. Nobody really noticed because I was doing my own hair. When I say I knew how to do sew-ins and twists and all this stuff, I know I do all types of uh, twisties and all, you know how we used to love doing the twisties. I know I do all that shit, you know. So I did a good job of covering it up of what I did, you know. I did do some twisties and then like um, put put it in a bun or something but then at that point i had to cut when she cut my hair once the beauty uh lady cut my hair i started adding a weave because i wanted my original texture i wanted my original length back so i added some weave in it so my family's like what you doing to tracks you know but, but at that time they, they didn't care about tracks now that they didn't care about you know but they didn't just didn't want to put a perm in my hair so they let me put like three tracks in my hair. I put three tracks to add the length back of, the, of what I lost because they understood like my hair was dumb long. So they understood like, okay, she, you know, um, lost quite a bit from the hairdresser. So let, me put, let her put the three tracks in. When I said my shit was so fucked up, man, all throughout high school. Then it just got so, and by the time I went to high school, it was uh, sew-ins. I did the sew-ins, like, I, I, cause I, I, I stopped that fucking glue. I knew that glue was just bad news. I said, hell no. But I started knowing how to do the sew-ins and sewing that shit in myself. And, you know, uh, that that was a big thing. The sew-in was a big thing. Or the wee ponytail, you know, with the tracks, you know, wrap it around and get a bobby pin and stick it in and then get another bobby pin and stick it in, you know, with the, put the ball in the middle of the hair, wrap the weave around. Sometimes the ball was showing, my ball was showing quite a bit at times. <laughs> So, you know, that was my hair journey. And it was every day for four years in high school. I, oh, I wore a weave. Now, I did, I went a, I, I had, I did wear my, I want to say sophomore year. Now, I'm making stuff up. Sophomore year, I did wear my straight. Uh, I did wear um, my real hair for the whole year. But guess what? It was a perm. You know, it was straight. I wore it straight. And, um, I mean, it was healthy. But it, it didn't grow. You know, because that stuff alters your kids chemistry alters your brain it alters your hormones you know so that's what i was doing and then um it was just bad like i had a perm for my whole high school year and and, and i them girls are just looking at me like bitch we told you we told your stupid ass how you had this long fucking hair you know okay so what it get fuzzy after you after the day is done so what you know or or don't stay straight after you press it you know, like I didn't think like that as, as a kid. They they was telling me like, dude, don't do it, and I did it. I learned my lesson. So I'm uh, 18 years old. I get to uh, high school, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not high school. I get to college, and I just got tired of the, the weave shit. I mean, I started getting these wigs and you know doing these lace fronts, and it, oh, I just I don't know like. I just got tired. I, I I did like it didn't feel good. It it, it, it just I don't know. This I don't know what happened. So when I was eighteen, and I was eighteen in two thousand and ten. I was in I was in college. I had graduated from high school. I went into college in two thousand ten, and I just said fuck it. I cut this shit off. I just cut it all off and said whatever. And I had like a I did like a mohawk. I left a mohawk at the top, and I just cut it, cut it all off. And it was really curly. And then I came, and everybody was like, "What the hell did she? You know what's going on?" And then that wasn't enough for me because I had the, the t that mohawk part was still permed, right? So I just cut everything off, bloop, faded, you know. And I did it myself, faded, faded, faded. And I was not confident enough to go out like that. I did wear a wig, I did wear a wig, and my shit grew back, 
it grew back. It, it grew back fairly fast, you know. Within a year, I was able to do, you know, buns and ponytails and stuff like that. Natural hair, afro, uh, wet and, what is it called? Uh, twist out and all that shit. Wet and go, whatever it is. Able to do all that stuff. And that has been my journey. And I do wear weave. I wear weave that clearly looks like my hair texture. I wear hair that looks like 4C. My hair's uh, 3B, 3C hair. But, you know, um, I can't find good weave textures for my hair so i end up getting um for a for b for c i don't, I don't really care what it looks like those look like african fucking hair um so I, I do wear um weave i also wear the the yaki the yaki weave the, the, the real the, the real real thick 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 hair that looks that looks like how the black girl's hair look when you straighten it i wear that that looks very natural that's clear as day like so many black women wear that you can't tell that it's weave because that's how their hair looks when you straighten it we all have had that I've, that's how my hair was when i was a kid so you know i wear some of that still so i i do wear the weave I don't wear it every day and uh i'll say about once a month now you know with the pandemic shit but even before then i was wearing it twice a week uh you know and the rest of the time i just didn't really care uh for the most part but I finessed it, you know, I, I know how to get, there. like, and when I went to college, like, I went, I was in graduate school, when I say none of the girls, black, white, Indian, Spanish, whatever, none of them motherfuckers knew I wore weed. So I was in a group where it was just the black girls. Now, there's not that many black people at, at this camp, at this school, it's like 0.1% black, right? So it's, uh, it, the school is, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, find uh, four of the black girls, one, there was four of us, an Indian girl. We all just started to hang out, have fun, go out, you know, drink, go wherever. They thought that this that whole time they knew me, that that was my. They didn't, they didn't even question it because it was so immaculate. When I say I had my shit, I, I don't play. Like it matches the texture. They just they can't understand. Like they was looking like so. They was like, man, can you tell us what you do? Can you tell us some? some tips because they all, all the black girls they were wearing weave but they were wearing natural hair weave too or they were wearing afros so they were weave but you could you, they were just natural hair but you could still tell it was weave right so i'm like oh this this is a wig i mean you know it's a, you know it's a half wig i got my real hair in the front and i got a little half wig going on in the back and i was like what what oh no 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 they was like they was, i mean i said they was examining and i was like i can't see no i can't see nothing i can't see i, I, don't, I don't understand it and I'm like, dude, it's the same. That's because this is a 4C. When you go in a package, it say 4C uh, texture. You know, how it looks when you did the 4C hair. It, the roots are real nappy. I mean, it, it's the bomb. This wig is the shit. And they, the girls pull up their phone right now. Tell me, give me that wig right now. Give me the name of that. Order it right now. So they order it. She orders it. Same color, same texture, same everything. And... They was just shocked. They was like, how the fuck did you get that up there, you know, concocted like that to where, you know, they just could not believe it. And I'm like, well, if you wear it, you shouldn't be able to really tell. Isn't that the thing, ladies? And, you know, it should match your hair texture, ladies. I mean, come on, you know. So now I'm at the stage where I don't really care. I actually be doing a lot of the twists put the gel in, uh, you know, some twists, and put the, some, you know, I just, I really don't give a shit now with this pandemic, but, um, the twist is a good style, you know, the two strand twists all around the head, I just do that, that's my journey with my hair, you know, nothing too, pretty much similar to the rest of the black ladies, you know, you, you, you had to perm and fuck your hair up, and you put some weave in it, you know, and then you, you got tired of it, or you still wear it, and you got tired, you cut the shit off, and you, you know, go natural, so it was pretty much the same journey. So now we want to talk about what are the benefits. So now let's talk about the biological reasons. Let's understand why your hair is the way your hair is. I know I got to hurry up. I know I'm talking so much. So, ladies, your hair is melanated, right? And it's meant to grow towards the sun. Because that scalp, uh, it sweats in Africa. You know, we're in Africa. So to prevent mold fungus... And the animal smell, and to and to, and to keep that those little bugs off the hair, um, you can't have straight hair in Africa because it will it will, it will be sweaty all the time, right? The straight hair will be sweaty all the time in Africa, and it get the mold on it. And guess what gets attracted to it? The bugs. 
So there's no way God gonna make your freaking hair straight in no goddamn Africa, right? So it's gonna grow towards the sun. It's gonna grow to the sun to get photosynthesis. So it's easier to get to the scalp for the sun to get to the scalp to get your vitamin D and to prevent fungus and mold and that stench uh, of, of, of of it being wet and straight or whatever that attracts attacks from wildlife so that's why god didn't make your hair like that and you know so you see the difference and, and if, if the european comes to africa his, his hair is always wet constantly from sweat and it starts to smell but when he's in europe it's cold it's meant to insulate the neck straight hair insulates the neck in europe so that's why the hair is straight it evolved to be straight so your hair is evolved to go to the sun to prevent mold from the hot ass sun always making your head sweat it's a great mechanism it's a great hair for the sun and that's what is that's why it looks like that. that's why it's 4c 4d for whatever uh and and, and grows up you could comb it up and it's, it stay right in its position it'll, it'll go up or you could do the braids it catches braids magnificently and do the braids and that also when it's in them braids the sun loves that because it's hit it's able to really hit that scalp right and it's also a, a, a mechanism to prevent against the mold so that is why your hair is the way it is and there are benefits so I want to give you some what, what are some ways that wearing the natural hair and embracing the natural hair or turning away from you know even if you you wear the weave whatever you know turning away from a genetic uh, hair print that doesn't match your dna what are some benefits so i say that you can it restores the image that the black woman showcases of self-respect and comfort in her beauty because the black woman is truly beautiful so again i'm not saying oh you gotta wear your hair and put no weave in it look if you get a three they got the free tress, ultra sensational. I know it all. Put the, put the. They got they got all the four B stuff now. Four C, three A, whatever. They got all that stuff that match our hair now. If you're doing now, that's that's a good protective style. Your hair is not gonna go. I'm telling you, I did this shit when I went bald. When I had cut all my hair off, I wore that ultra free tress shit on my head. I was not allergic to it for one, and two. It does not make your edges fall out unless you get in the lace front and you got it like the, the clip something in or something but if you bobby pin it in and you don't have no tension around your edges your shit is not going to be bald on the sides like the photos i showed you it's impossible unless you permanent or unless you got your braid so tight but you shouldn't be having no tight ass braids if you're gonna put no free tress wig on it anyways just put it loosely and, and and put a scalp uh, uh uh one of them uh do rag thingy on a uh, little scully cap and then put the free trust wig that's already your hair texture on there until your shit grow back now that's a protective style now that i could see and know your hair will not fall out unless um uh, you know again some type of perm or some type of chemical that you're using and it, it, then then that way it, in that sense then it will fall out but ladies there's so many different arrays of what we uh, can do. So wearing your hair, whether it's natural, whether it's braids, whether it's locks, whether it's a natural hair weave, this shows the the beauty of the black woman and how she looks when she comes out the womb as much as possible, right? So you get less clownery. You stop giving these this people these ammunition and want to always come with you and get in an altercation with you. When someone gets jealous of you, what do they do? They rip your wig off. When you get in a fight with women, black women, you be getting your wigs whipped off, ripped off your head, and showing a bald skull cap. Now I have seen this. Like, take a look. Remember the the, the dark skin girl, the real pretty dark skin girl who did strippers, and they went to I want to say Blueface, some some rapper's house, and she was the only dark skin girl, and they were all light skin. She didn't do nothing. She went about no drama. She wasn't start no shit. All the light skin girls wanted to fight each other for some reason. They just were stupid. Like they just they wanted to fight each other. This girl wasn't fighting. This girl went into Blueface and was actually talking with him. Some light skinned girl come out of nowhere, snatches the girl's wig off her head, and everybody's laughing at her. Cause she has um um she has straight wig weave on. She's she's like the she has the skull cap on that look that make her look bald. Even though she's not bald, she has braids underneath. And but ha ha she didn't defend her, so she didn't go she don't wanna fight. She, you know, not everybody wanna fight and shit. So 
The video goes viral. Everybody's laughing. She's a beautiful girl. Oh, the only girls that was defending her were black women. Nobody else, they ain't nobody give a fuck. No black men ain't give a fuck. Nobody stood up for her and defended her. Now, my thing is, she should have never been in that position to get embarrassed like that. For one, she was the best looking one. Two, why would you have that shit sewn in your head? Like, why would you just put a wig, a straight ass wig on your head and go around some bitches? Like, on a... a I just couldn't understand the lie. I'm like, you didn't even hold us since the saw that shit on. So if she, she pulled it, it, it at least when it came out. So these ladies are getting their wigs pulled off. Black men snatching wigs. Yeah, there's tons of videos on World Star Hip Hop and YouTube of the black woman getting her wig snatched off her head. And everybody laughing when all she needed to do was have them nice big ass afros sold in her head. And yes, even if you wear the free tress or ultra natural hair wig you could sew that shit around the perimeter you don't have to sew a whole thing you sew it around the perimeter or there's ways where you can bobby pin that shit up so good that when somebody tug it i be pulling my shit you know just you know, i'll be pulling to make sure it don't come out if they pull it they gotta i mean they they will be yanking it and it won't come out so easily you know and or you could just wear your real hair if imagine if she just would have had her this girl was beautiful she still is, obviously. But well, imagine if she just would have wore her real hair in the afro, maybe a little twist out or something, or gel to the back or whatever she want to do, and it was her real shit. That that light skin girl would not have been able to go and hate on her and embarrass her for no reason. Like when they was asking her, "Why did you do it?" She was just like, "So what?" People was, you know, so she didn't even have an answer. She didn't know. She had no reason. She just got jealous. And. All I'm saying is, black women, don't put yourself in those positions to have keep people keep embarrassing you about your hair. Because everybody knows you're sensitive about it, but you. Because you have a mental fragmentation around it. So all I'm saying is, make sure that shit is in tight. Make sure it's natural looking. Don't have nobody be able to clown you. You know, when you have Malaysian, Malon Mongolian hair, then you got a real Malaysian, Mongolian bitch around at, at these events. And... You get up in their face or whatever, or they get jealous of they pull your shit off and be like, look, you trying to look like me. And then you wonder why the black man goes after the Malaysian Mongolian girl because you, his whole life saw you putting Malaysian, Mal Mal Mongolian, Brazilian hair weave in your head that doesn't match your hair texture. So all I'm saying is, ladies, you know what to do. You know what looks good. Which is your natural, beautiful self. You know that your hair is fine. We have to do more to take care of it. I can give you some tips on growing your hair fast. I can give you some tips on all types of stuff. You got biotin, you got MSN, you got cedarwood, cayenne pepper, mint. Get it. Some hair can take egg protein really good. Some cannot, so you have to be careful. You have emu oil, really good for the hair. It can uh, mess up your face if it gets on your face, though. So it'd be, it's very careful if you use emu oil. 24 karat gold. I put 24 karat gold in my motherfucking hair. You know, because it helps with growth. Okay? The emu oil. All types of things. Bringraj. Bringraj means king of hair in India. Bringraj. Put that shit in your hair. I put that in my hair. I used to drink it. It's a, it's a similar to the daisy family. That's why you see the Indians with the real long hair. They use Bring Garage every day since they're kids. So get into the Bring Garage, black woman. Uh, sulfur, MSM, you can put that in. I think I already said that. Um, glutathione on can grow your hair, but it, it can also do other things. I, 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 don't want, I don't want you messing with that stuff. Um, what else? Mm, it's mad stuff. But if y'all know stuff, put it in the comment section because we need to start getting tips. And we need to start uh, just adorning our hair. Adoring it and, and loving it because it is beautiful. And, and giving the tips of what kind of berries. Hibiscus is good for black hair. Put the hibiscus in your hair. Um, aloe vera is good for some hair. Sometimes it makes it a little dry. But there's so many things we can do, ladies. We can help each other out so that we can embrace these hair. You know, so we, we see how these black women is getting her hair snatched and her wig snatched. Because she didn't wear braids or locks or an afro. Or a sew-in of 3A through 4C hair in your head so don't let nobody come and snatch your crown literally try to snatch you know and, and up up on you or try to you know uh embarrass you because they know you wearing this wig shit okay so another reason why you want to wear 
your real hair as much as possible is because that's how you're going to get your informational downloads from the universe and the sun okay so now that you understand the the benefits of it that it is it's it's a evolutionary reason why your hair is that way there is um you know you don't want people to be able to just snatch your shit off and you get the informational downloads from the sun and the universe and then that's it's, it, you're embracing your beauty so now that we talked about that let's go on about the brief message that, about our male counterparts black male counterparts and we're moving along pretty good